When I told Eli that I was leaving the choice for our next film review entirely in his hands, I assumed that some amount of vengeance would enter into his decision-making process. And it did. But I could not have imagined what kind of horrible crucible of passive entertainment he had unearthed with Kirk Cameron's 2008 masterwork of scenery chewing fireproof. <laughs> now, for the last 24 hours or so, I've been struggling to formulate an introduction that would do justice to the absolute horror that was this film. And the best I can come up with in a sentence is that it was like two hours of watching the non-fucking parts of porn. <laughs> Just for the acting. The dude's face, the, the <laughs> expressions. How... And, of course, to help guide us through this cinematic shard is my good friend Eli Bosnick. Eli, welcome back. Hey, Noah, thanks for having me. Uh, anytime, sir. Uh, so after having watched this movie, do you think this was a, a good decision on your part or a bad decision? <laughs> this is the best decision I have ever, ever made. Let me tell you, I have, I have turned down meth. And I have not fucked a girl who it turned out was HIV positive. And watching this movie is the best decision. This is the best decision right here. We wow. are, despite sidestepping AIDS, just <laughs> barely. Even That's even better. Good all right, stuff. Now, it's really horrifying to me that we can actually all three make sort of a qualified judgment here. But where would you guys rank Fireproof compared to Kirk Cameron's other cinematic offerings? Oh, this is I one mean, of his. It's not as good as Kirk Cameron's Saving Christmas because there's a plot and more than two characters. <laughs> um, but it's good in other ways. It's like you know you can't complain. You can't compare like uh, Sunset Boulevard and Raging Bull. You know, it's like oh, they're different films. <laughs> that's, that, that's what it's like. Yeah. That's, that's exactly like, what it's like. That's yeah. what it's like for me. It's like a different. It's like oh, do I want to eat dog shit or do I want to eat human shit? <laughs> I don't know. What kind of mood am I in? A little closer. The first ten minutes of this movie, people speak entirely in exposition, like they were tortured, <laughs> like they were homeland style tortured to only speak in exposition. <laughs> Just like, well, you know, as my friend of ten years and fellow spider, <laughs> that I enjoy salt baked potatoes. <laughs> I do. Please don't shock my balls again. <laughs> I would have taken a shock in the balls over that. So, yeah, we meet him. He's a fireman. And then, of course, we switch over to meet uh, his career-oriented wife. It was too busy to shop, apparently. And she, of course, meets Dr. McSexy. And you could tell, again, these movies, the crazy thing about this is every every time I review one of these movies, I'm like, and then the black people. And I'm like, someone is going to listen to this and be like, ah, oh, Eli's a racist. It's not no. these movies. <laughs> are so fucking racist that when I describe the actions, I feel like I should be wearing a hood because it's just like, <laughs> all the black characters do this. So she's talking to the other doctor and he's like, you can call me Gabriel, which by the way, is totally fine and appropriate in the workplace. Right. And all of the black nurses look at each other like, eh, 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 eh. Mm -hmm. and yeah. I wrote down, sassy black nurses do not approve of first names. <laughs> And also, this woman, this white woman who is staring into the middle distance as though she ate a bucket of chalk, <laughs> has nothing but sassy black friends. Then she goes and visits Stroke Mom. Oh, right. God, I was so stupid. Stroke Mom is sitting in her chair. She's now mute, I assume, from the stroke. And she turns to her and she goes, I miss you. And this mute person, who has apparently just lost the ability to speak, is like, eh, that's the meanest thing in the world. Someone's mute and you're like, man, I wish you were alive. <laughs> <laughs> Your mom had a stroke. She's not dead. But she, all she, she just wants. just rose for Emily. Does dad just have her propped in the chair? <laughs> Taxidermied or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> no, but all, but we learned very early on because there is nothing subtle in this movie that all she really wants is a hospital bed and a wheelchair for her mom that'll cost about twenty four thousand twenty four thousand dollars three hundred dollars thousand dollars it's a nice ass wheelchair that's right. got so real that wheelchair they, they better Fair like mom. bring her back to like, like <laughs> get a transformer for less <laughs> is she riding around in optimus prime <laughs> Autobots. Oh, sorry, Karen, you're going to have to. Well, we can go to bath time later. I've got what well, I've got to assemble the Autobots. 
So that then, would have been such a better Oh, movie. an 80 year old stroke victim as one of the Autobots in the crew. That would be amazing, I, I would watch but that not, cartoon. Not in a, now, not in a Transformer. Just like Autobots assemble, and she's like, <laughs> Karen pooped again. Well, no, Bumblebee, you're going to do it. Because I did it last. I'm a mega truck, and you're just like a car thing. You change her. It's gross. It's gross. I want to give up on humans. Yes. <laughs> And then, so they finally, finally we see the husband and wife together, and they have the world's weirdest fight (laughs) instantly over nothing, and ends with him screaming in her face. (laughs) It's literally, I've had, I mean, that's, that's a common occurrence. She like puts the milk away because he left it out while he's getting the cereal and he turns back, and instead of being like, (laughs) actually I was gonna use the milk, he's like, you fucking bitch. And, and doesn't eat cereal. He's like, well, no. she put the milk away. I'm having a power bar. <laughs> there was a, there was a definite until we get to the porn later, which I'll come to the, the idea that like things that destroy marriages are the fact that people want boats. Right. Like, like that was a bad thing. Everyone in this movie, if the reality of this movie is true, it is a selfish bad thing to want to have your own activities and life. <laughs> He didn't like, even I, know, I thought I'd have a boat. You selfish son of a bitch. <laughs> but now you've already brought up the porn, which was an amazingly large part of this movie that was devoted to. Like, <laughs> I could not, not have possibly that. imagined that. that we were going to spend this much time on the story arc of Kirk Cameron's character's internet porn addiction. <laughs> and I wanted it. I And it was out of nowhere. Yeah. It was out of nowhere. I didn't, cause she was like, you're always looking at boats. And he was, by the way. Every shot of him not talking to someone already, he's looking at a giant children's book about boats. <laughs> he's looking at, it's, it's, no, it's newspaper sized giant book that says boats across the front. <laughs> Lest our audience forget he's into boats. But the <laughs> internet port comes out of nowhere. He's on the computer, which by the way, is Apple II E over there. That movie <laughs> is the computer takes up half the room. <laughs> right. He's got to put punch cards into it. <laughs> and he's he's on a website about boats. And he gets a porn pop-up that just says, Wanna see. <laughs> That's the porn pop-up. It's not like, Big dick slugging <laughs> It's wanna see. I'd be like, I don't have any idea. Boats? Do I want to see boats? <laughs> It's a fully dressed woman looking at the screen. <laughs> it's not an scene. attractive one or anything. It is not an attractive one. Then there is no porn. I mean, there. I have been deep into the world of internet <laughs> porn, and that woman would not be allowed. <laughs> it would not be allowed. You have to go on Red Tube like the rest of the world. Now, you do not get a pop up. No, That's, I'm ready. Right. He's got the liar liar moment of like they're fighting his hair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It was the most awkward shit. But we're getting way ahead of ourselves in the plot here. We haven't even right. we haven't even met Smiley Black Best Friend guy. Michael! <laughs> Michael, Michael yes. who speaks entirely in platitudes. And <laughs> fun fact, I went over the movie again to make sure this is true. Kirk Cameron's character at no point responds to anything that comes out of Michael's mouth. He talks. They take turn talking. But Michael will be like, you know, I think I'd like some raspberry juice. She just doesn't respect me. <laughs> I kept waiting for Michael to be like, hey, man, you listen to what the fuck I'm saying. Because <laughs> he just he just declares statements that are in no way related to what Michael just said. If Michael had spoken entirely in scat, <laughs> her camera's lines would have changed not at all. Nope. And then they go back and they fight again. This is now a second fight where she calls him selfish and he makes the very valid point of he's like, really? I save lives for myself. I pull children out of a lake for myself. At which point I stood up and said, I pull children out of a lake for myself. (laughs) The other thing, too, is like these people, all of their fights are about like missed timing or not understanding. It's like fucking text. Like, this is not a problem of the marriage. This is just like, hey, ordering pizza, want some? No, thanks. It's, but that's it. That's, that's, that's how they solve their marriage. It's all of their problems. But instead he comes home and he's like, you fucking whore. How didn't you save me half a pizza? 
The boat gets mentioned twice in the fight, by the way. The internet porn comes up again. And and by the way, they were fighting over Georgia pizza. I'm having that right now. It's <laughs> ridiculous that they're fighting over Georgia pizza. Anyway, good, moving on. Basically a Trisket with cheese sauce. <laughs> yes, exactly. You, Rich, but it's in here in 30 minutes or less or it's free. <laughs> no, um, just, just take your time and make it better. <laughs> just please. So they have the fight. He goes outside. And then we have the beginning of our first running joke. Because he's picking up the trash can. Yeah. And the neighbor's outside. Mr. Rudolph. Mr. Rudolph. <laughs> All right. More than anything in the world, if I had three wishes, three of them would be a spin-off movie about the Rudolphs who are an atheist couple who fucking hate each other, but they hate their neighbors more. And it's just... We see the scenes, and then he goes inside, and he's like, that motherfucker next door, you know the crazy one? Yeah, the one who's always jerking off to boats. He's up there the shit out of his trash can, and his wife's like, really? What the fuck's the matter with him? Oh, God knows. So then we cut to the firehouse, um, because we're about to have the Grease summer loving moment, where they're talking to their respective friends, where he's like, she doesn't think I listen. And she's like, he doesn't listen. And he's like, and she says whatever he just said. Yeah. And then her friends are like, mm-hmm. I, th- I noticed they went with the three-fifths compromise on the uh, the breakdown of the, the white and the, yeah. the black friends on that one. Oh, the, and then the white, there's the one white friend that she has at the brunch scene, but she's acting black, which is really offensive and upsetting. Because <laughs> all the black nurses are like, mm, girl. And so her white friend is like, mm, girl. <laughs> Why am I in this movie? Oh, God. Oh, God, they're all around me. Just wow. take it. Just take it. I think every time her co-stars walked on set, she would just throw their purse at them and run away. start blowing her whistle. All right. Now, I, I believe we've we've uh, reached the first um, first time we get to see Kurt Cameron be a, a hero in the film. It's terrifying. Yes. And, and one car has been mangled beyond belief. And the other car is on the tracks with a girl, quote-unquote, trapped in it. The car is ripped wide open for the shot. She can very clearly get out of that car. Yes. <laughs> she, has, she has a single droplet of blood on her forehead, and she's like, I can't get out of the car! I can't get out of the car! Please let me! I can't get out of the car! And I would just be like, ma'am, there's a large hole here. If you simply crawl Jesus, out all of the, the directions. Car, you go. <laughs> literally any way except backwards into your seat. And which down. Is, which is the direction. And so so then two firemen come forward and single-handedly try to lift the car, yes. which, by the way, is not a thing. It doesn't. doesn't and work, no. Nobody helps. <laughs> nobody helps because a train is coming. Yeah. Nobody helps. And then finally a soldier stepped forward. And we could tell he's a soldier because he's dressed. <laughs> yes. in his- he has everything except the rifle and like an American flag and like a line of like, I just came from my fallen brother's funeral. I'll help you. <laughs> then two more men help, which allows them to move the car off of the tracks, which is the craziest way <laughs> to try to get one person out of a car that's going to get hit by a train I'm... I've ever seen. So they move it and then the black guy prays because he, because everyone was safe. And I wrote, thank you, Lord, for putting those children in front of that train. (laughs) Which is always, and he goes, he then, he turns to a guy and he goes, I broke my record for how close I can come to death and still live. And I wrote, that's a weird record. (laughs) (laughs) Look at this. I'm going to put my face real close to this Wolverine. (laughs) Okay, two inches. (laughs) So they get back to the house and then the other black guy goes, I don't believe in God, and then just, just wanders off into the sunset. <laughs> Never hear, we don't come back to that. That's not a thing. They're just, you know, he's talking about it, and it's just like, it's, they're just talking, and then he's like, well, are you a Christian? And he's like, I'm an atheist. Or he's like, I think we go into the ground. Goop, scoop, and doop, doop. And just, poof, just poofs away like a blatheist genie. So then... Kirk Cameron calls his dad to say that his marriage is falling apart. And Kirk Cameron's 
br- dad brings his mom, and this is a theme throughout this movie. It's such a heavy-handed theme that so does it pay off. But it's, why did you bring mom? I fucking hate you. <laughs> yes. No matter what this mom does, Kirk hates his mom. And his mom does not do anything crazy. No. She's like, she's like, hey, Kirk, you know, we really hope your marriage makes it. And he's like, fuck off, mom! <laughs> Through every moment of this movie. So then he, he, he and his dad, t- he screams at his mom, and then he and his dad take a walk to Giant Crucifix yes. Hill. <laughs> He's like, what is this place? No, 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 it used to be a summer camp. For what? For the KKK? <laughs> the weirdest- it's just logs gathered around a giant, giant right. crucifix. Yes. His dad's like... Well, you know, I'm a Christian, and Kirk's like, Dad, fuck off. And he's like, well, I'm going to mail you something, which is weird because he could have brought it with him. <laughs> so his dad mails him the, thing, the book, which is based on the Christian book, The Love Dare, but he has handwritten yes. it <laughs> into a notebook for his son, which is crazy. And the book basically – I want to take a moment to talk about this book. Oh, please. The only advice that this book has on marriage is – do nice things. Yes. That if you bring them a cheesecake from the Cheesecake Factory, it'll solve the fact that you don't communicate and you don't eat pussy. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Just try not to say anything mean for 24 hours. Yeah. That was the first thing. Yeah. I was like, try not to say cunt for four hours. <laughs> you can do it, Matthew twelve fourteen. And he almost does it right away after that. He comes yeah. so close. Yeah, he comes out and and they're t- not talking because they're mad at each other, which is a healthy like. I mean, communication is better, but like, it's not unhealthy to be like, "Hey, I need some time. Let's not talk." And so he comes out and he's like, "Hey," and she says something that makes him mad, and he goes through like a weird like, "Why I oughta?" moment behind her back, like, but it's impossible not to be like, "Fuck you," and then go beat up my garbage cans in front of my neighbor, and then the nurses. So she's like, well, he's being really nice to me. Now, all of a sudden, like, she's like, oh, he's being really nice to me. And the nurses are like, he's buttering you up for a divorce. Yes. How does that help? What Don't, does that mean? That's that's a crazy thing to say. It's like, my friend, her husband was sweet as sugar, and then she didn't get nothing. And it's like, that has nothing to do with divorce. Right. Which, what, what, that's not how it works. She her divorce papers that were like, by the way, I get to keep everything. And she was like, well, he has been real nice. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> factor into anything <laughs> what kind of what what laws are on the book like well can you tell me ma'am how nice has he been over the last three weeks i don't know pretty nice no contest <laughs> <laughs> she made you coffee did he make you coffee oh that counts even if you didn't drink it i wrote during this scene about three times how do people think divorce works <laughs> that wrote this movie? and then we come to and we've already we've already kind of hinted on this one, but what I consider to be the greatest scene ever created, where he is he has to struggle with his porn addiction. Now she's caught him watching porn at one point in this movie. She came in and he's looking at porn on the on the, the thing. It, he doesn't even have his dick out, so he's right, just he's looking, out. looking he's just at the porn. porn. It's like he's got an addiction to cooking heroin and leaving it on the spoon. <laughs> Right, exactly. He's just, which is weird, just, but not that destructive. Yeah. Ultimately, yeah. Ultimately, if his porn is just clicking on wanna see, and then <laughs> yes. that thin, then that strong six shows you like her thigh. <laughs> I don't think I could bring myself to jerk off to that either. If you're halfway through boats, and then someone's just like, I don't know, wanna see my tits? I'd be like, eh, sure. <laughs> but I'm not like, I'm not pulling my dick out for that. You know, okay, that's, I'm gonna burn calories. But now they had to find a way, these clever filmmakers, to represent the moment where he overcomes his porn addiction. He, he, his <laughs> finger hovers over the want to see ad and he doesn't, he decides not to, he doesn't hit, he doesn't just X out of it and get some like, you know, some pop up blocker software to add to his computer. He goes the full regalia, <laughs> takes his Commodore 128 out into the yard. <laughs> With a baseball bat and goes all office space on it. And wouldn't you know it, Mr. Rudolph is out there to see the whole thing again. It's also, so it's also not like self-control if you destroy the object. Like, not helping your wa- neighbor's wife doesn't count if you kill your neighbor's wife. <laughs> Don't worry, honey. I overcame yeah. my addiction to porn. 
I killed all the actresses in Los Angeles <laughs> because I choose you. Look, I got you nice flowers this time. And then he says the thing. And again, she turns to him, and I just wrote all of my notes for this scene where you really should get a divorce. They should get a divorce. Yes. Get a divorce and find people they like. Because she, she turns to him, and she's like, Kurt, or whatever his real name is in the movie. She's like, I want you to know I don't love you. And I'm like, wow, you should get a divorce. Yes. But the whole fucking message of this movie is no matter how miserable the, the conversation he has with his dad is all about how miserable his mom and dad were all throughout Kirk's upbringing or whatever. And the message of this movie very clearly is no matter how miserable you are, do not get divorced. Except for the like good black guy who did get divorced and, and then, then wound up with a better, with a better yeah. woman. Yeah. He's so. now living in ex- and he's like, oh, I got divorced. And he's like, you did? And he's like, yes, and now I'm very happy. Back to how you shouldn't get a divorce. Yeah, right. Start. And so he calls his dad, and this is, again, magical dad, calls his dad, and he's like, dad. And he goes, this is when it gets hard. And it's like, how? How did you know? How do you know that this is the day there's just every day 20 in the love air? She turns to you and she's like, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Which I wouldn't blame her for. If I did the love dare on my girlfriend, I'd make it to day three and she'd be like, what are you doing? You're doing something <laughs> weird. Are you mad? <laughs> Stop pouring coffee. I am not notice I'm not saying anything about what a fuck you are. <laughs> 23 hours and 12 minutes of not calling you a bitch. <laughs> So they, so he and his dad meet up and dad lays in with the Jesus talk. And this is just, again, a moment of uh, where a character expresses reasoned beliefs about salvation. And the other character is just like, nope, not listening. So he's like, dad, I save people. I'm a fireman. And he's like, God doesn't judge by our standards. He uses his standards. Crazy standards. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Standards about who you think is magic and who you think is not magic. <laughs> not whether or not you save children from a burning building. No. But whether or not you say the think the right name in your head before you go <laughs> night night. <laughs> of course, any reasonable person would have been like, don't you see you're rejecting God? That's not what we're talking about. All right. <laughs> Did you notice how big this lowercase t is? <laughs> so... I wrote down, people are acting like marriage is a baby. A baby that could die. <laughs> this, this entire movie is just one being like, oh no, the marriage. Yeah, the like, marriage, uh... it's all, we gotta save the marriage. It's like, no, no. Not to mention, she's now, she goes to the hospital the first time. We, we have to touch on the doctor, her oh, relationship. Yes, of course. She goes to the hospital and she finds out that someone <laughs> has bought a fancy Megatron wheelchair and a fancy bed <laughs> for her stroke mom. And she walks away mid-sentence from this woman. This woman's like, yeah, yes, someone already right. paid. And she just wanders away. <laughs> Which no she does reason. again yes. later in the movie. Later on, she finds out that it was Kirk Cameron who gave the money, not the doctor she's been flirting with. And she's like, oh, no, it was your husband. And she just, again, turns around. And I wanted that character so badly to be like, hey, ma'am. Fuck you. <laughs> right. So she thinks that it's Dr. McHandsome, who turns out to be married, but that's it never culminates in anything. No, uh-uh. But it's actually Kirk used his boat money to buy her mom a magic chair. Yes. Oh, and then he takes her, they're, they're made up, and he takes her to Crystal Lake to introduce her to Jesus. He takes her to Big Cross <laughs> make circle place. And it's, oh, it's so fucking... Oh, dude, it, it, it was like, it was really, it was, like, unless I find out later that at some point Nazis, like, actually bludgeon Jews to death with cameras, this is the worst thing ever done with a camera. Yeah. Like, unless they were actually used physically as weapons in the Holocaust, this is the worst thing that a camera's ever been used for. And then we got the final revelation after they've, they're all happy and... It made up, and he's talking to his dad about Jesus, and his dad is like, son, even though I write the book in my handwriting, which brings back the handwriting, why he copied an entire book book, like a crazy person, I wrote it in my handwriting, because you wouldn't believe that I used a book unless it was written in my handwriting. (laughs) Wait a minute, you didn't read this book, you didn't copy it out into my notebook separately. (laughs) 
shenanigans, Dad. <laughs> but it was actually... <laughs> it was actually, your mother did the love dare to me. At which point, Kirk Cameron sprints back to his mom yes. and says, I did it, no! And she's like, it's okay, honey. It's okay. And I'm just like, I don't get it. I don't understand Okay. Happens. I think I can elucidate this one for you because when he walks into the door to n- stop being a bitch to mom, because like you said, it was just completely out of fucking left field every time he was a bitch to his mom for no reason in the movie. And then he comes in at the end and is, he's got the, I shit you know, he's got the like the shoulder slumped, I just skinned my knee walking to mom to apologize thing. And, he, and as, as he embraces her, I realized that we were watching old lady porn and this was the money shot. Is because it all makes it is old lady porn because even the love dare is made for old women. It's yes. not made for human beings who still have sexual lives. It's just like, well, what what would I like in my marriage? I don't know. Maybe he could stop saying mean shit for twenty four hours. <laughs> maybe do something nice for me. I don't know. Maybe maybe not not hit me in the face. Just go for a tummy tuck every now and then. You know, just a nice little rib shot there. It's so old lady porn. This is a this is a revelation. Even the things that like, yeah, because they don't know what porn is. No, and so and, like, and I it's... bet porn is when you stare at the computer and there's a vixen staring out at you with a bedroom eyes, and you're just like, yeah. And of course, bad. the old ladies think it's perfectly natural that the way to overcome that is to destroy the computer because they don't know that there are other things you can do other than stare they at. They don't know boats. where the off button is. <laughs> They have to call some Indian guy. I would like to destroy my devil computer. <laughs> I am sorry, ma'am. I've been on hold for 20 minutes trying to destroy this devil computer. There's a woman popping out at me from this boat site. So I don't know what she wants me to see. But I know it's not the light of the Lord. <laughs> So now, other than not calling your uh, your lady friend a cunt for 24 hours, are there any other life lessons that you feel like we should take away from this partial birth abortion of a movie, Eli? Yes. One very important one, because he says it. He says, it's not about your feelings. Christian, I, I have a section of my notes called Christian Marriage Advice. <laughs> uh, Christian Marriage Advice. Um, doing nice things in silence makes everyone forgive everyone. <laughs> Christian Marriage Advice. Ignore your feelings and don't communicate. Um, oh, Christian marriage advice. The only person you should love more than your spouse is an imaginary wizard in the sky. Yes. It's very like, important. important stuff. <laughs> All right. Now, I believe we are about a month away from the theatrical release of Do You Believe, brought to you from the makers of God's Not Dead. Uh, so Eli, are you ready for this one? I'm so excited. <laughs> I've been sending, I've just been tweeting the do you believe people dick pics. It's slowly <laughs> growing harder until just the day of do you believe. Just me and 500 Mexicans in that movie theater. Just them clapping at all the wrong moments. I'm so excited. Just too large popcorn all by myself. <laughs> Excellent, sir. Well, until then, uh, thank you for your humorous masochism, sir. Oh, I can't wait. (laughs) 